Welcome to Talking Plant Protein. I'm Nicole Astra. And I'm Joey Thurman. It's the start of a new year and eating healthy is at the top of everyone's minds. And you've heard it a thousand times, eat more plants to be healthy. But you do not have to give up meat to make an impact in your body and on the planet. When I spoke to Victory Nutrition's Jocelyn Reichert, we discussed the rise of the flexitarian diet. Here's what she sees trending among consumers. People are asking for plant-based substitutions, mm -hmm. for their favorite dishes, for their traditional dishes. They want to know how to make a plant-based substitute. How do you make a spaghetti carbonara? Because they want it to be healthier. Exactly, okay, they want it to be healthier without yeah. missing the comfort, without missing that you know experience that takes them back to maybe when they were young, maybe how they grew up. But they want to make it healthier. They want to make it more plant-based. So you know, how do you make a dish more plant-based? Well, you work with us on you know healthy substitutions. Spaghetti carbonara can be spaghetti squash mm -hmm. carbonara. You know, and it doesn't have to be all or nothing like we talk about all the time. Maybe you still incorporate some um, half and half into that carbonara instead of completely taking out all animal products. But this is a way to transition into more healthy plant-based eating. That's something I wish the carnivores understood was just make some simple substitutions to get more plants in your diet. It's not about giving up meat completely. Yeah, I mean, just pull it back a little bit, add some more greens. Which I know there. you will never do. Oh, oh I, I have lots of <laughs> greens, right? I mean, you know. No, I mean, you can't right. give up the meat. Oh, I know. No. I'm, I'm a fan of meat. Maybe I'll pull yeah. back and just add some beans or something like but that. But it's all about the balance, yeah. yes. Now, it's incredibly important to know what we're putting in our bodies. Now, right now, according to the CDC, over 26 million people have been diagnosed with diabetes. That's a massive number. Author Dr. Cyrus Kambata of Mastering Diabetes came up with a formula to help people control their insulin. And get this, it's a high-carb diet. Oh, yes. carbs. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do without. If you choose to eat a low-carbohydrate diet, what that means is that you're going to be getting the bulk of your calories from either fat, or protein or some combination of the both. Mm -hmm. So you limit your carbohydrate intake and that, that forces you to eat more fat and protein. When you do that, you actually are suppressing your carbohydrate tolerance. In other words, you are making insulin less active inside of your muscle and inside of your liver and as much as a week, okay? Now, a lot of people are like, come on, are you kidding me? You're telling me that I've been living with type 2 diabetes, I'm taking metformin, maybe some other oral diabetic medications, and you're telling me that I can eat a higher carbohydrate diet and all of a sudden my glucose is going to improve? And the answer is, yeah. I thought that was really interesting how you can have high carbs, but the caveat is you have to be low fat. Here's also good news for pasta lovers. Jazzy Lupini is pasta made from legumes and it's very popular among the diabetic community. But founder Jazz Sanchez is receiving a lot of buzz beyond the plant-based world as well. The bean is naturally very low carb. It's more low carb than chickpeas and soy, um, which are also legumes like the lupin bean. And um, it it's gluten free, it's vegan, and it, it fits into all of those categories. So, so many people can enjoy it. Um, whereas vegans can't um, have, you know, egg pasta, but it, it, it mimics that egg pasta texture so well. So, so many people that typically wouldn't be eating um, pasta are now able to have it with Jazzy Lupini. And it supplements the diet for people who need extra protein who are vegans as well. But where I really found my niche, which you're mentioning, is the diabetic community. Um, so many people cannot have um, pasta unless it's like one of those zero carb um, or zero calorie pastas like shirataki noodles, which is basically just um, like a cognac fiber and it doesn't taste very good. A customer experience was very important to me when developing Jazzy Lupini because first I developed it for me and I would never sell to other people something that I would not want to eat. And I always say like our slogan is that it looks like pasta, it cooks like pasta, it tastes like pasta, it is pasta. 
Be sure to check out her whole story on our website. Joey, she was first introduced to the lupin bean in a pub in Italy by in an pub? older gentleman. That seems a little strange. Yeah. So lupin or lupini? That's what is it? it? Depends where you're at, I guess. I've heard it both ways, but either way, it is nutritious and so high in fiber. Mm, powerful. The power of plants, people. So eating clean has tremendous health benefits. Jessica Gable had some health issues of her own, which led to the creation of clean label Fabalish, made with aquafaba. Eric Cox has her story and more. All right, thanks, Nicole. And Jessica, this is a real game changer, what you have going on here. <laughs> I understand you had a pretty difficult health journey on your way to creating Fabalish. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So my my parents were Polish immigrants and, you know, working multiple jobs during the week. And we kind of grew up on just fast foods and TV dinners. And, uh, you know, we didn't think about food at the time. No one actually gave it a second thought. And so, yeah, thankfully, in my early 20s, I ended up having a lot of health issues. Uh, mm -hmm. I say thankfully because I wouldn't be here right now. Um, <laughs> but I was prescribed various drugs and steroids and antibiotics and nothing actually really helped. It made it worse, if, if anything. But intuitively, I knew I was too young to have problems like that. So I uh, dove in a little bit deeper and, and intuitively I uh, started looking at my diet and my lifestyle and I started changing the way I eat um, and cooked actually for myself. And I started to heal myself. And it was, it was for me, it was, it was incredible. I, it really opened up my eyes and I knew I wasn't the only one um, in this position and so I just became super passionate about cooking and clean eating I wanted to go to culinary school the natural gourmet Institute in order to get to school I applied uh, to various grants and scholarships and I got myself on the Food Network show called cooks versus cons I was an amateur chef it's two cooks uh, against two amateur chefs and uh, the audience and the judges don't know who's who, <laughs> and I ended up winning by my own shock. I was shocked. I shocked wow. my own self, but I was able to prove that you can cook healthy. Um, but it was absolutely delicious because your dish was winning, right? Not, you know. Um, so yeah. So for me, you know, it was I was really showing that I was making a difference. And so after graduation, after school, I became a private chef to help other people like myself. Um, and uh, that's where I started working with aquafaba, which I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But aquafaba is a great um, tool to use in the kitchen because it's it's soy free, nut free, gluten free, egg free, dairy free, and mm. it really gives that nice flavor that we that creamy texture that we love. Um, and so then I started selling my sauces at farmers market. So I, it's a long it's a long story, but it's uh, it's it's all important to where I where I am today. And now we're growing like crazy and stores and online and it's it's just been an exciting journey for it me. certainly sounds exciting yeah <laughs> it sounds incredible an incredible testimony and like yeah. you said it all started with aquafaba and chickpeas that's one simple ingredient we have in front crazy? of us can you tell us how you created the company based off this yeah yeah so i i always thought uh, chickpeas were fascinating and there's there's such an untapped potential with chickpeas and when i discovered aquafaba in school my mind was blown i was like this is so <laughs> cool it just sounds so simple um and normally we would toss this down the drain i can yep. show you a little bit how it works um normally we'd toss this down the drain so this is this is aquafaba and when you strip Strain it. So we have the chickpeas here, and normally we would strain this and mm -hmm. toss this down the, the drain. Uh, to me, I call it liquid gold because <laughs> you're going to see in just a little bit why. But um, I was using chickpeas first, and then um, for my clients, and I would use the aquafaba, you know, as a great sauce replacement. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just show you. So we upcycle. So we use the chickpeas and this. We don't toss anything out, um, which is really important for yeah. us. Um, let me just. That's incredible. Close this ah oh, there we go yeah. so it's really fun you just pop this into a food processor like so and you're gonna about to see what happens um, it's just magical <laughs> <laughs> Wow, after just a minute, it looks totally different. It's crazy. So aquafaba, when the chickpeas are being boiled in that water, the chickpeas release tiny strands of protein and starches mm. that mimic an egg white consistency. Mm. So when you whip up an egg white, this is, this is pretty much exactly what it would look like. Um, right. So you can make meringues out of this, whipped cream. You just have to add whether it's sugar or salt or oils or acids. You know, there's a lot more that you have to add into it, but this is such an amazing base. Wow. So this is the base of our sauces that you can see here. We've got a ranch, faba dip, a tzatziki, and a queso. So mm -hmm. 
that's what's great about it is that it has that creamy um, egg white consistency or maybe like a dairy consistency yeah. um, and then you can just add whatever flavor it smells a little bit it's like a mellow bean flavor like it's, it's, it's smell. nice though yeah. yeah but it's not overpowering I enjoy it. Um, yeah it's not overpowering at all and it doesn't really have much flavor so you just have to make sure you add that flavor whether it's sweet or savory that you go and Certainly we went savory versatile. yeah very really versatile well, that's and then incredible. from the actual leftover chickpeas we make our baked and organic falafel, mm -hmm. which is the first on the market. Right so. over here, right <laughs> over here. I just learned something new. I didn't realize that you could basically take the liquid of that and then one, be nutritious and also heal yourself. And there's a huge um, influx of the byproducts. So keeping that nutritious waste in the food system. So it's closing the economy as well. I like closing the loop yes. and it's going to be delicious. Put some sugar in there too. I know, don't yeah, have right. sugar. We, I didn't say that. I didn't say have sugar. <laughs> now, <laughs> speaking of sugar that you should get rid of, uh, it's not just <laughs> what we eat. We have to be in tune with our body and mind. And one simple way to do this, Nicole, I know, are you stressed? We're always stressed. Okay. Busy moms, right? right? Yeah. So let's take care of our body and our mind. So it's called five finger breathing. Okay. So we're going to go from the stress state to a relaxed state here. Now, yes. this is sensory, right? We can feel our hands, okay? So our hands are similar to the bottom of our feet, the glabrous skin. I know things, right? Not just a pretty face. So we're going to take, okay. take our finger here. We're going to take a deep inhalation. We're going to pause at the top of each finger, exhale at the bottom. All right, okay. ready? We're going to take a deep inhale through the nose, pause, exhale through the mouth. Right with me. In. Pause. Exhale. Can Don't feel, feel silly. That? Do this. There we go. In. Ah, oh, you can close your eyes. In. I feel amazing right now. X. One more. In. And exhale. How do you feel? I love it. That's good. The the truth is. It was what, 15 seconds, but we're not, we don't even take that time to check in with ourselves in the day. Right, so you check in, you take that inhalation through the nose, which you get more oxygen in through your nose. People don't breathe right. We take a pause and we exhale throughout the mouth or out the nose, doesn't really matter too much. And it brings us from that fight or flight state yeah. of uh, the you know, crazy running from tigers to parasympathetic, where we rest, digest, and recover. And recover, that's right. We talk about health all the time and it really is more than what we feed our bodies. Yes. It, yeah, absolutely. Love it. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining us on Talking Plant Protein. I'm Nicole Astra. And I'm Joey Thurman. We will see you next time.